now recording from under the towel. <laughs> I am recording as well. Are you under a towel? Uh, there is a towel somewhere in this booth. I will not tell you where. Oh, dear. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I've got my trio. All right. Ladies and gentlemen, water your family tree, resequence your latent genome traits, and devise a new alias. Because it's time to talk tall to me. That was sassy. I'm Omen Sade. And I'm Nick McGill. We are Feckless Moons. And this is Talk Tall to Me, the ancestral voyage across the historical landscape that is the band Jethro Tull. Episode by episode, we will unearth the archaeological layers, track our ancient lineage, and realize that we ourselves are the princes of Prague Rock. And find the embarrassing cousins, the the embarrassing relations, yeah. I think it's important to acknowledge that. (laughs) And we'll also find those photographs that our mothers took of us when we refused (laughs) to wear anything but a hat. (laughs) That's an actual picture that my mother has. Yep, I believe it. 100%. Yep. And there's, of course, the the obligatory um, naked in the tub, you know. Oh, yeah, naked in the tub. Um, Covered in tin foil. Ian Anderson naked in the tub. Yeah. Um, yeah. Just from last so, and, year, and, actually. The timestamp is 2018. What? And here we are. Nick, do we have any housekeeping today? Uh, no housekeeping for this week. Okay, great. Just let the house go to rot, I guess. Keep those cobwebs up. And yep. so today, what do we have the pleasure of talking about, Nick? What song are we going to be talking to, all, to our audience about today? This week is the final song off of Benefit. Uh, Bonus is not included. It is number 10, track number 10. It is Sassity, You're a Woman. Let's have a listen. Let us. Wow. Okay, so Nick, question four. Uh, yeah. How many songs are on this album? This is ten. This is number ten. Okay. Five on each side. Okay, great. So so one out of ten, how, how where does this song rank for you in terms of this album? Ten, ten being your, your preferred one and one being your least preferred one. Like if I had to listen to one song off of Benefit? Like if you had to rate them, if you had to rate them one, one through ten, where, where does this one fall? Um, I would say two. It's in the top three. Oh, I'm sorry. No. Oh, so ten, ten, eight, eight, nine, or ten. It's in the top three. It's in the top 30th percentile, you would say. Yes, that is precisely what I would say. Okay. Now ask me the same question. Oh no. Omen, I'm going to make it I'm going to ask you a question that's going to make a lot more sense than the last one that was asked to me. <laughs> if you could rate these songs 1 through 10, number 1 being your favorite song off of this album, obviously, mm-hmm. cuz that's how mm-hmm. rating things works. Okay. Where where <laughs> where would you rate this song? Out of 10? Yeah. 11. Oh! I <laughs> I knew it. I expected that. But it still hurts. It still hurts. <laughs> <laughs> Seriously, you always hurt the ones you love. I I don't love this song, Nick. I'm so sorry. Oh, this is the and, and actually man. this is the first time I think that I've said this on this podcast. Wow. I appreciate the song. I respect the song, but I do not like the song. Yeah, yeah. That's where I'm at. Let me be clear. My love for this song has nothing to do for with the lyrics. Okay, great. Yeah. D- does that that doesn't change good, anything? Good good for you. Yeah. <laughs> it's this is such a gorgeous song. You know that guitar? Mm-hmm. The organ and guitars in the beginning, the double yeah. guitar and then the double Ian singing. 
Yeah. Yeah. One more <laughs> Ian than you need, really. Um, <laughs> twice the amount of Ian that anyone asked for. When they get to the Saucity or Woman chorus, that the tambourine that just like jumps. Oh, yes. I'm shocked. Oh, oh, the tambourine. Oh, be still my throbbing heart. God, oh, I love it. God, Omen I love Sade, a good tambourine you riff. put that away right now Goodness on me. any other song. You know full well that these shoes would be swapped. And, and they you'd have be been. the one praising. Exactly. That's exactly <laughs> what I'm oh, saying. How the, oh, how the worm turns. <laughs> oh, how the... The turning oh, of the, the worm. T- how the tambourine trembles, Nick. Yeah, no, this is not my favorite song. Uh, neither musically nor for lyrics. <laughs> Nor for its length. It's four minutes and 30 seconds long. Uh, I really it's... think it could be about two minutes and 30 seconds long. I need to <laughs> sit down and put my head between my knees and just breathe for a moment. Yeah, yeah. Put, your, put your head between someone's knees and breathe for a moment. <laughs> I... Oh, wait. How have we made it 20 years and we've never discussed Sausity? Um, because I'm because I'm polite, I think is why. Because you don't ever want to talk about it, and I just assumed that you would like it. <laughs> yeah, you that's savage. Right. That's right. Thus do relationships crumble, Nick. <laughs> that was the that was the last Jenga piece. And, yeah. And here here it is, episode thirty seven. But you know, here's the thing, Nick. Uh, I um, aspire to be a gentleman. And therefore, uh, I will discuss this song and all of its and all of its merits, if there if there might be any, uh, with a with a level of respect, because I you know it's not it's not that it's a terrible song. It's just it's just that it's my least favorite song on this album, or maybe wow. the or maybe the two adjacent albums. Wow, yeah. Let's start musically. So it starts off with that um, with that um, delightfully baroque, <laughs> ornamentalized acoustic guitar playing now do you think that that's ian or do you think that's our friend martin Barr? all of this feels just so facetious <laughs> and and ingenuine no i i think it is very baroque <laughs> goodness well there are two guitars in there are there yeah okay you think so they're playing it, in tandem it, it, it could be both yeah that seems the most likely option, but it also feels very, it feels like it requires a certain level of skill that I feel like Ian has never really exhibited. And he himself has said, I think I've said this on a previous podcast, he's never claimed to be a good guitarist. He can play their songs well. Sure. But he can't play anyone else's. I, I also think that I think that it might be him, though, because I, I do think that, you know, we do hear on later albums that he gets much more intricate with his guitar playing. Okay. I think that he's certainly not a good guitar player in the context of, like, rock and roll music at large. Mm-hmm. But I think that we hear, especially later on, like, with songs from the wood. Yeah. And and let's remember, he's played the guitar since he was, like, 13 years old. That's true, yeah. So he's he's not new to the instrument. That's true. And I think that, you know, that most of the styles that they've been playing with up to this point haven't really allowed him, haven't necessitated him uh, busting out his his moves in in maybe the full extent of his ability. Mm-hmm. So maybe, maybe he was letting loose a little bit with his guitar skills here. Sure. OK. And I think that there is really a fun thing to, that happens between the, the bass, the guitar and the organ in that first in that first introduction. Mm-hmm. Like it really, it really feels well. It's I think it's really well constructed, and, and it does sort of give this feeling of like I see sort of like fancy ball gowns and sort of a Wuthering Heights type society. It's very, it's very Downton Abbey. It feels very Downton Abbey. Hmm. That's a te- that's a television show that's been on recently. I don't know if you know of it. Um, it was on PBS, so yes, I know about it, Omen. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I guess that's Victorian, though. Uh, yeah. But the Victorians loved Baroque stuff. Well, I mean. So much so that they went Baroque. (laughs) Hi-yo! That's a, uh... Hmm. (laughs) (laughs) Tune into our other podcast, Kvetch British Class Systems to me. You used a Yiddish word for that? Yeah. 
Yeah. Wow, just really just covering all your bases on that. I yeah, I'm trying to trying to appeal to as many people as we can. Okay. So so yeah, and then and then sorry to sorry to like get like this again, Nick, but for me, I love that introduction. Okay. And then they do literally that introduction like eight more times without changing it up for the verses until they get to the chorus, Saucity, you're a woman. Mm. And then literally the way they change it is by adding the tambourine. Maybe Ian had just learned how to finger pick or something and was and just wanted to do that one part over and over. Maybe, maybe that is it. Maybe he had just discovered a tambourine and was like, lads, this will bring him in. That's not his voice. No, that was, that was Paul McCartney. Thank you for noticing. <laughs> Paul McCartney walked into the performance, said, you're missing a tambourine. We picked it up while we were with the Maharishi. <laughs> We've got an extra. This will make <laughs> the song real, really banging. <laughs> Ringo, is this the real tambourine, or is this the one that I saw last night in my trip? <laughs> because, because, because drugs. Because drugs. But I don't know. <laughs> was, that, was that it? That was my, that was my Ringo. <laughs> <laughs> A man of few words, Ringo Starr. <laughs> he, he was, though. Yeah. He was. He was the yeah. drummer. He was in the back. He spoke with his fingers. That's, that, mm, yep. So does yep. my masseuse. Ah. <laughs> and my stenographer um, oh my so nick do you have anything else to say about the music i think we've covered it, it took about 10 seconds i mean i just i i don't feel valued in this relationship anymore tell me tell me what what do we do what do we do point and counterpoint tell me why you like the song so much i i think i think musically that really classical feel that baroque that you were so mm. tongue-in-cheek talking about <laughs> I think it's such a a well executed departure from what we're accustomed to hearing from Jethro Tull. I think even though it's on the simpler side, it is it is effective in in their use of it. I'll give you that. It definitely it definitely stands out in this album stylistically. Mm-hmm. And and I mean and I think that one of the things that that we both have talked about loving about Jethro Tull is is that they they are so aggressively exploratory mm. they're like they're like <laughs> so is my proctologist they're like sp- <laughs> wow <laughs> i was gonna go with a with a historical reference but um mm, no but give I'm, me that I, one too i think we yeah. all learned oh is that what you said to your proctologist <laughs> no so is so is gandhi's proctologist mm. <laughs> what <laughs> historical uh, reference oh that. wow <laughs> no, I was gonna say I was gonna say it was like the it was like the Spanish in the um, in the age of exploration. Oh, aggressively aggressively exploratory. But no, you're right. This this is this is a distinct stylistical departure. We we don't hear we don't hear any guitar playing like this anywhere else in the album. We certainly don't play. We don't certainly don't hear any um any any tambourine like this anywhere else on the album, as evidenced by the fact that they put out an album after this. <laughs> but. But then, so then, so then we have the, so then we have the lyrics. I, I will admit that I kind of blacked out and went to my happy place after the first verse. So, so why don't you start us off? What do, what is this song talking about? I, I'm trying to figure that out. I think there's some yeah, it pretty. It seems like they were too. Yeah. There's some pretty chunky metaphor, I think, going on here. Yeah. Supposedly theoretically society is society oh i see and he's he's saying i'm using this allegory of a an old an aging antiquated woman as the the imagery of what society is Right, right. He's sort of playing on this on this um, British class system, I think, uh, on the imagery. Yeah, I, I, you know, I do, I do like some of the some of the lyrics. Hello, you straight laced lady dressed in white, but your shoes aren't clean. 
painted them up with polish in the hope we can't see where you've been. Hello, you straight lace lady, dressed in white, but your shoes aren't clean. Painted them up with polish in the hope we can't see where you've been. I, I mean, I do think that that is definitely in line with a lot of his other songs where he where he critiques society again yeah. not in a not in an explicit and political way because he always rides that line but he does often Henderson does often critique society in a sort of a general sense from a from an outside position he going going back to this idea that that he feels outside of of society outside of outside of life like Michael Collins, if you will, flying on the dark side of the moon. Oh, I will. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Although this I, one... <laughs> I was hoping you would. <laughs> this one feels a lot more... This one feels a lot heavier, a lot more derisive than what we've seen so far in his commentary. Yeah, yeah. And I, I just want to say the 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 chorus of Sassity, you're a woman... Society, yeah. you're a woman. That is the equivalent of a comedian having to explain his why his jokes are funny or her jokes or her jokes fair enough that's that's like society or society explaining why her jokes are funny sure no yeah i i um... it's it's if you have to if at the end of your allegory of your metaphor you're saying oh yeah by the way this is a metaphor for this that's a crap metaphor i'm sorry so you know <laughs> so here I want to I want to pitch a theory to you, Nick. Please, please do. Here it comes. Oh, okay. <laughs> you got it. I mean, okay, I, I, had to, I had to pick it up. I, I dropped it. Okay, okay. That, that's it was my my fault. Bad, bad throw. So I I think so. When I first heard the the song ages ago, mm -hmm. the line "Sausity, you're a woman." Of course, naturally, immediately reminded me of the line from Hamlet, where Hamlet is is uh, confronting his mother. Mm -hmm. Or, or uh, no, no, sorry. He's speaking about his mother. This is this is uh, act act one, scene one, or act one, scene two. He's describing his mother having married his uncle shortly after the death of his father. And right. He says, "Frailty, thy name is woman." Yeah. Do you think that this is a, a conscious and direct reference to that I, line from I mean, Shakespeare? It really feels like it. Sausity, you're a woman. Frailty, thy name is woman. I, I mean, because I... in, in, in the case of Hamlet, he is saying that his mother is frail he's his mother is morally weak because she yeah. she often marries her her dead husband's brother o often off off and off oh, and, oh, and okay <laughs> and often you know maybe I, we we only know of that one how, how many know how, who knows how many siblings there were that's true yeah I, and and the character of sassity seems to be fairly frail Right. So there seems to be, I mean, I guess there's like sort of a cyclical implication of, of that, of that weakness here. Mm -hmm. I think the thing that bothers me about it is that he's putting all of these negative, he's describing society in this negative way and using, there's something about it that, that bothers me that it's, that he's, that he's chosen it to be a woman. I know it's, you know what I mean? You have to, you have to separate out the fact that this was written in 1969 and it is literally 50 years later when a lot has evolved. Speaking of Shakespeare, and this relates. So when I was in London studying Shakespeare, I was doing, I had a, I had a one-on-one -on -one with the head of the school, whose name, it was also Ian, funnily enough, Ian Woldrich, <sighs> a Welshman, and quite an accomplished director. And I had, a, I was working on a speech from, from Cymbeline, a posthumous, who, who has supposedly discovered that his, his love his fiance is cheating on him. Of course, it's not true. It was an, it was a it was a trick of Giacomo the Italian to convince Posthumus of this. But anyway, he has a soliloquy where he he's his life is falling apart because he thinks that his girlfriend, his fiance, who is so pure, has been cheating on him. And he starts railing against 
womankind. He's in basically his course of logic is if Imogen has been unfaithful to me, then all women in all of history have always been unfaithful. And it sort of escalates quite quickly, if you will. Yeah, it's the reductive reasoning or something like that. To- totally, exactly. Yeah. So, so, so I went. So I did this. I did this. This soliloquy for uh, for Ian Woldrich and this private lesson, and he looked at me and he was like, he was like, "All right, the language isn't bad. You're getting some of the arguments, but you have to hate women more." And I was like, I was like, "What?" Wait, was it Paul McCartney that you? This is this is literally. Look, I only have one British accent. <laughs> <laughs> this is literally how he spoke, though. You have this to hate women. How- Ringo pops know. up in the back row. <laughs> and I was like, I was like, I beg your pardon. He was like, he was like, look, it's difficult for your generation because you've had feminism. But for my generation, we really knew how to hate women. <laughs> and I was like, oh, my God, this is crazy. But and that's that's what this feels like. It's yeah. sort of like it's it's sort of like, you know what I'd like to do with this song? Hate women. Hate women. Yeah. I, I'd I'd like to I'd like to make it look like I'm railing against society, but man, them bitches be tripping. It kind of feels like that. It kind of feels like that, and like maybe that wasn't the intent. And you know, maybe maybe um, maybe I'm a snowflake, and this is triggering me in my safe space. But like, I don't know. I get the sense it just feels out of date to me. Yes, absolutely. But there are some fun metaphors. I the 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 lyrics are problematic to say the least and even even when I was in high school the the lyrics never really did much for me because it is so convoluted in t- in the message that he's trying to impart right. I I feel anyway right but no I'm telling you it was it's always been the instrumental for me on this song great nice <laughs> Hey, just we, you can wait. We sh- just can you, we shift? Just you wait. <laughs> I can't wait until we find a song that you just love. And I uh... can we sh- can we shift gears here for a second into a discussion of the word saucity itself? Yes. Okay. I just I have I have a most likely apocryphal story about the name saucity. Please, please, I'd love to hear it. I love apocrypha. Apparently supposedly and apparently possibly hypothetically yeah. most likely theoretically allegedly certainly uh, certainly allegedly <laughs> determinedly impotently martin barr not the, not the least reprehensible if so defensible <sighs> is that is that that's one from, of your your rap songs no that's from the musical chicago actually yeah so one of your rap songs yeah, I guess. Basically. um <laughs> Supposedly, Martin Barr bought a boat and named it Saucity. Right. And after after Ian told Barr that it was a song railing against society and society is and Saucity is just just a a play on the word society, he sold mm. the boat. Wow. Yep. That's what they call bullying. <laughs> so I I have heard that. Oh really? Again, we don't know. If, we don't. Yeah, we have. We don't know if that's true. But I, I also have another origin for the word saucy. Oh, okay. It, it appears to be an Irish name. Really? Yeah, or or um, or maybe a Scottish name. But some. It seems to be some kind of old, old Northern UK name. Huh. There are at least two spellings of it. Okay. And it is not a popular name. Mm-hmm. In in fact, according to the U.S. Census, there it does have, not exist. The Social Security Administration has recorded twelve babies born with the first name Saucity in the United States. Now, in the in the history of the United States, from eighteen eighty to two thousand seventeen. Wow. Okay. Guess when that. Guess guess when that uh. That number sp- spiked. <gasps> <laughs> Please tell me it was like 1970. 1970, 1971, 1972. What? Yeah. So someone, some hippies have wow. heard this album and were like, you know that song that talks about how society is so evil and terrible and it, and it, and it beats on women and it's, it's about saucity. 
We should name our kids Saucity. <laughs> it's like, spoiler alert, it's like, th- this is a Game of Thrones spoiler. Anyone? Yeah. Anyone? Pause it or skip forward 30 it's, seconds. It's literally all already happened, Nick. Game okay. of Thrones is already out. Okay. I mean, it's still relatively recent, and I haven't sure. seen the last season. I just know this part. It's the it's the equivalent of seeing seasons like one through three of Game of Thrones and naming your kid Daenerys and then finding out that she's right. like a raging crazy person at the end. Right, right, right. It's the same thing. Yeah. Would you like to hear some names that are less popular than Saucity? <laughs> oh, my goodness. <laughs> <laughs> Do you have a a, a substantial number of how many less there are? Like, is it just like four below Saucity? No, 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 no. I I think there, I think there are a lot of really obscure names. I know this is the, the seven, the, the, the 70,404th most popular name of all time. Okay. So would you like to hear some names that are less popular than Saucity? Let's throw them out there. Yeah, absolutely. Julesim. That's a typo. <laughs> no. That's a typo. Over. No, the name Julesim. All right, moving spell on. It. Spell it. G- spell it. It's J U L E Z I M, just like it sounds. Julesim. Do you think that's like. I don't know. Would you like to hear another one? Like Hasidic or something? I, I, I don't know. I don't know. Hebrew? Do you Jules want to hear him? another one? Yes, please. Banwanti. <laughs> <laughs> that. B A N W A N T I E. That sounds like an African or something. I think it's Irish. Oh. Okay. Would you like to hear another one? Yes. Jennifred. (laughs) (laughs) That's straight out of like Tennessee. That is like West Virginia. They had the baby in the same same they they had to empty out the the moonshine tub to have the baby in. <laughs> they couldn't decide be- between Jennifer and Winifred. No, so no, so no, no. My guess, my guess is mom is Jennifer, dad is Fred. Oh wow! Yeah, Jennifred. There's there's also uh, Stackman. Oh, that sounds first like name, Stackman. Like that Stack, sounds Stackman. <laughs> I played that game a lot in high school. <laughs> that that sounds like like a name you'd hear at Yale or something. But like a last name. I gu- yeah, I guess so. This is Aaron Stackman. He's the president of Phi Delta Delta. <laughs> His jaw doesn't open. <laughs> There's also Hogler. <laughs> Stackman Hogler. He's the guy. That's not bad. Yeah, it's like yeah. a superhero name. Yeah. Do you want to know what's more popular that than was, Saucity? That sounded like a time for everything? Uh, no, yeah. Questionable that, that it's more. Yeah, please. Sisto. Sisto? S-I-S-T-O. That sounds super familiar, actually. I couldn't tell you I think you're thinking of why. Cisco. No. No, I know, I know Cisco exists, but Cisco sounds, uh, but, but also as a last name. Cisco exists, though. <laughs> okay, okay, this has been fun. I, w- I want to move on to one more that's a, point. That's a spell from Harry Potter, I think. Yeah, I want to move on to one more, one more point here. Okay. Okay, let's say that it's not, that he wasn't taking it from the name, and that, and that Ian Anderson was just making up the word. Because that's that's well, that is one theory that it's just a complete play on words, right? But how does that explain its existence? I'm I'm just saying I'm just saying that he that that it wouldn't be the first person or last person to make up a word for the sake of a song. Okay, okay, go ahead, go on. It reminds me of the Digital Underground's song, <laughs> "The Humpty Dance," written. And performed by Shock G under the guise of Humpty Hump. This is a callback to a couple of weeks ago. I will read you the following lyric. I get stupid. I shoot an arrow like Cupid. I worded, I, oh, I gotta do it again to cut that out. For the record, if you want me to cut anything, just swear a blue streak <laughs> and I'll have to cut it out. Great. Cut that from the thing that I just did. <laughs> All right, here it is. Ready? 
I get stupid. I shoot an arrow like Cupid. I use a word that don't mean nothing like loop did. That's just I couldn't come up with a rhyme. And yet, that word, looped, L-O-O-P-T-I-D, has been used in multiple other songs since then. So he actually created Mr. Sh- uh, Shock G, under the guise of Humpty Hump, in the Humpty Dance song, created that word, and it has, it has gone on. It has, it's, it's had a life. It's like, the, it's like the name Wendy. In what context has, was it used after the fact because it's clearly like oh we're showing our cred by doing a callback to this very early rap song you know right but is it just like humpty hump said loop did we do this da, 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 or is it like using it in the context of an actual word right uh, you, you came at this as an expert. You've got to expect questions, my friend. I um, I I'm I'm going to throw that to our audience. <laughs> uh, send us examples of the word "looped," or you know, <laughs> use it in an email to your boss today. <laughs> I'm sorry, ma'am. I can't finish the reports. This progress has been looped by the excessive risk taking of the financial department. So it's a verb. I, I think uh, I think it's up for interpretation. Do you want to know how many times Saucity, your woman, has been played in concert? I do. It has been played 158 times. Yo, that's a looped amount of plays. There's more. It is more looped than one could loopity loop, my friend. <laughs> Wow, you, when is your next rap album dropping, Nick? I wanted to save it for the end, but I guess <laughs> I'll have to tell you. First one was April 19th, 1970, Long Beach Arena, Long Beach, California. Again. Yes, again, again, again with the California. Again with the California. Most recently by Ian Anderson, December 18th, 2008, at the Auditorium Santa Chiara in Trento, Italy. That was a seriously uh, unnecessary pronunciation there, and I loved it. <laughs> it's like the people on the Food Network that like cook Italian food, and they just like right. really ham up. We're making a lasagna, right? But they're from they're from Alabama. Yeah, and the rest of, the rest of their their speech is just straight up like we're gonna make some lasagna. Yes. Yeah. 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 Mm, I love that's the, that's what that was. <laughs> Nick, what's your favorite made up word that you've ever used? I mean, if you're going back to Humpty, the Humpty dance, I'm going to say Bumpty is, is up there. I, yeah. <laughs> mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Mort Panto is really good. Oh, yeah, it is. Because it's a portman... It's a, no, it's a spoonerism of portman, of the word portmanteau. And I like... I, those are my two favorite English idiosyncrasies. Yeah. English language idiosyncrasies. Yeah. As, as a follow-up, Juju used the term looped in Reign of the Tech uh, three years after the release of the Humpty Dance by the Digital Underground. And what's, what's the, the line? What's the context? I, uh, I don't think I can say it on the air. <laughs> Shall I say it and you can beep it out? Yeah, I'll do that. Les flipped the ill shit kid. Yo, he looped it. He looped it? He looped it. So that's a that's clearly a verb. He looped it. Or no, or it could also be saying, "Yo, he is looped it." I think. It, I mean, I think it also goes back to Shakespeare. Be thou looped it, or nay. Thy scruptids do lie in the hay. It's from one of the. That's from a. Uh, that's from the uh, the the tortoise and the phoenix. I'm pretty sure. Yeah. Yeah, like at least fourth folio. They didn't really. They yeah. took them a long time to find that one. I think it was originally originally attributed to Christopher Buhlman, but <laughs> yeah, it was found in an extremely dirty quarto. Yeah, yeah, content and and physical. Oh yeah, extremely dirty. 
Hey, so Nick. Yeah. Oh man. Do you do we have any sauce more to pour over this over this song? No, I think I've appreciated it enough for both of us. <laughs> mm-hmm. Great. <laughs> wow. Well, if you are a woman, you can go on to YouTube. Nope. If you are a woman or a man <laughs> or anything else. Doesn't matter what you are. You could be a woman. You could be society. You could be a tortoise or a phoenix. Doesn't matter. You can still go on to iTunes, rate and review us. Give us those stars. And if you shoot for the stars and you don't hit them, you can still land on our moons. And once you land, you may be a little looped, but you'll get over it. Just have a shot of saucy and you'll be all right. Like, is it a negative thing to be looped? I think it is, right? It's derogatory to be looped. It's up to you, Nick. Yeah. Ugh. The power is in your hands. I hate this. Yeah. English, right? What are we listening to next week? Next week is the first of our bonus tracks off of Benefit. So this is the this is the end of the official American release of Benefit. I just had an American release. <laughs> <laughs> and it was to your benefit, no doubt. And it was to everyone's benefit. Yeah. So so, uh, so now we're moving we're moving on to the bonus tracks. It's really, really yep, exciting. That's right. Bonus track one of four. It is singing all day. It sure is. <laughs> and until next week. We'll be singing all day, getting our vocal cords ready to talk tall to you. Be singing all week. Uh, yeah, I'm Nick McGill. I'm Omen Sade. And we are Feckless Momes. This is Talk Tall to Me. Talk Tall to Me is a proud member of the Feckless Momes, the so looped Feckless Momes audio network. Drop the beat.